This presentation is going to talk about OpenMP. And essentially, I'm going to break down um, some basic OpenMP loops. But before we even get there, let me talk about OpenMP just for several seconds. OpenMP is a great way to add parallelization to your code. With just some simple Pragma directives, your compiler can parallelize your code. And this can add significant performance boosts to your applications. So let's take a look at this loop. And this loop is one that we would say has no dependencies. And that's what this presentation is going to uh, focus on. So in this loop, the results for each iteration do not depend on the result of another iteration. For this reason, multiple calculations could be done simultaneously. Just for the sake of comparison, let's go ahead and talk about a loop that does have dependencies. Here we start off with the result sub 0 equals 55, and then we loop through the rest of the elements in the array. And for each one, we say result sub i equals result sub i minus 1, then the other calculations. But basically, it depends on the results of another iteration. So we say that this loop has dependencies, and it's not just as simple as running each one independent of the other. So I just wanted to show you this for contrast, but we will not be discussing this situation in detail. OpenNP makes it extremely easy to parallelize loops. So it's as simple as using a compiler directive to instruct the compiler to parallelize the loop as follows. Pound pragma, OMP, specifying OMP is going to do this, parallel 4. Now, I use Visual Studio, so I have to actually go into the Visual Studio project properties and make sure it says to use OpenMP. Otherwise, it will just ignore this pragma. So depending on your compiler, you may have to uh, go in to the properties and, and set it so it will use OpenMP. Okay. So how does it work? If the compiler is instructed to parallelize a loop, it does the following. It starts off by creating a number of worker threads. This is normally determined at runtime, but OpenMP will let developers specify how many worker threads to use. Um, I have found this to be a bad idea, and I always let OpenMP, or almost always let OpenMP, determine how many worker threads um, to create at runtime, because different systems are going to perform differently depending on their resources. For instance, if you only have a core 2, Say if you have a core 2 and you specify four worker threads, then it will actually not be as effective as if you let OpenMP only create two worker threads. So each worker thread does part of the work. The work is um, separated amongst all the worker threads. Let's say OpenMP creates four worker threads, then the work is divided amongst four threads. So for a loop with a million iterations, if OpenMP creates four worker threads, then each worker thread performs 250,000 of the iterations. Now that we've seen a simple OpenMP loop, let me give you some final words. If you have a small loop, you may not get a performance uh, boost out of OpenMP. Um, in some cases, OpenMP can cost you performance instead of being a performance benefit. That's because there is some overhead in spawning the worker threads. So for a small loop, you're not going to get the gain because um, it's going to be offset by the process of spawning the worker threads. Another thing I want to point out is that OpenMP does have a synchronization method. So it waits at the end of the loop for all of the worker threads to complete before it moves to the next line uh, of code after the loop. It would be really bad if you had still some worker threads doing something and the program execution continued after the loop. So OpenMP makes parallelization easy. Besides being easy, it can potentially add huge performance boost to your programs. I've had OpenMP loops perform four to five to six times faster than the sequential version of the loop. <laughs>